When you leave the house, how many times do you check your pockets for your keys, your phone, your wallet, or anything else you might need? Or how many times do you make that trip back into the house for that thing you forgot, but probably don't really need? If just going out and being a part of the world fills you with anxiety, you are not alone. Today, we'll share the techniques we use like box breathing, positive self-talk, and exposure therapy to move through that paralyzing panic. Whether you struggle with anxiety yourself or want to better support anxious loved ones, This episode will give you new perspective and tools that may be helpful. But first, this is the FitMass where together we learn to develop habits that help us live beyond our mental health struggles to create happier, healthier lives. He's Zach. He lives in the future with his anxiety. He's Jeremy, and he lives in the past with his depression. And we get together once a week in the present to share the obstacles we face and how we overcome them. All right, thanks for listening. Today, we have something a little different for you. Zach and I both attended a conference last week in Denver. Spending several days together, we got an up-close look at how each of us deals with our anxiety in our own ways, for better or worse. So we grabbed a mic and went to a park to talk about that experience. So please forgive the crickets and the traffic noise. I promise it's not too bad. While we share our observations and hopefully some tips that may be helpful for you. So whenever I go to, and I travel a lot, so whenever I go to conferences or work things or whatever it is, right? I go into my hotel room and I'm like, okay, moment of sanctuary for the time being. Sure. Go to sleep or whatever. Later on, I got to get up and I got to get ready and I got to do whatever the fuck the thing is that I got to go do. Mm -hmm. Whether it's go to a conference, go to work, go to the thing, like go meet people, whatever. And like that step of just leaving the hotel room has always bothered me. It's always given me anxiety. Like I always like... You know, is my fly up? Is like, do I have toothpaste on my face? Do I, did I get deodorant on me? What am I going to interact with when I get out there? Like, just all those things right. that go through my head. But then you and I shared a hotel room the other night because we're trying to save costs. And you were leaving for the conference, and I was staying <laughs> put. And I literally watched the physical manifestation of the anxiety that goes through my brain as you were like, all right, I'm ready to go. Wait, let me check one more thing. All right, I'm ready to go. Wait, let me check one more thing. Uh, there you go. Let me check one more thing. It's some real shit, isn't it? It is some real shit. I, I do not do this often. I certainly don't travel without my family, so uh, I've grown accustomed to letting my wife worry about every little thing we would have possibly forgotten and easily dismissing it with, you know, we're in a big city. Whatever we need, we'll buy. And, you know, if, if we forgot something, no problem. But, you know, it's just me. I got to count on me and, and what's rattling around in my head. So, yeah, I totally was panicking. Like, I'm leaving the house at 8 a.m., and I'm not going to be back until 8 Mm p.m. How am I going to survive out of this place where we're staying for 12 hours? There's going to be some crucial thing that I'm going to forget, and it's I'm going to get so mad because I'll have to buy, you'll have to get Lyft to take me back to the hotel to get that thing that I forgot. It's not that, though. It's not even about things that you forget. It's the fact that you got to deal with fucking people. And it's the people, right? It's all I'm, the people. I'm around thousands of people for podcast movement. I haven't been around more than like 10 people since COVID. So that was nerve wracking. But also, so let's talk about that. The social anxiety piece of this, mm-hmm. the, the, the networking that everyone's there to do. I went to this thing thinking, I'm going to learn so much. I'm going to go to these sessions. I'm going to learn all this great new thinking on all things podcast related. Nope. But everyone there says, no, it's the networking. Well, great. That means I got to talk to people. Ugh. Not my thing, man. People. Not Ugh. my thing. I hear you. It's not like I don't seek it out, but like once I'm in the moment, I can do it and it's no problem. But yeah, no, the, the networking is definitely the benefit of conferences. Anyone who tells you that they're going for like the, the sessions or anything, you can watch the sessions afterwards. Yeah. They publish them for free. They're on YouTube. You're not going to learn anything from the sessions other than like maybe being able to go up and ask the presenter a question, like a detailed question right, right. and get like a specific answer. You'll learn that. But most of it is whenever I go to these conferences, and this is super, super uncomfortable, like I'll go to like the dinner or the lunch or like whatever it is where everyone's getting together. Yeah. And I'll go find a table that has a couple of open seats where I don't know anyone there. And I just walk up and be like, hey, can I join you guys? And I sit down nice. and I just start talking to them. It's super uncomfortable and I don't like it, but at the same time, like every time I do it, it gets a little bit easier, right. a little bit easier. And then I don't have that walk back and forth in the hotel room that I saw from you the other day yeah. as much. Right. So the interesting thing about that walk though, was that, you know, as you were pointing out to me that it was happening, I was fully aware of it. <laughs> but I finally got to a point where I was like, 
fucking enough, one foot in front of the other, to start taking steps. And it was such an, an embodiment of so many things that we talked about on the show because we overthink things, they have to be perfect before we go. I don't have the right equipment to do that thing. I don't have to just go in one foot in front of the other, take the first step, then the next one, then the next one. And as it turned out, when I did that, everything was fine. I had everything I needed. I had more than I needed. I could have left half the crap that I brought. You didn't even need your bag. No. Honestly. No. But I was worried that I might. So I had to bring it with me. But yeah. it was, I, I just, that moment was, I, I was fully aware as I was walking out the door, what a big deal it was that I was just like, here I go, taking a chance on something, stretching my comfort zone, doing something I'm not accustomed to doing you for the really, sake of growth. You did really well. Thanks, man. It was funny watching it, though, because I was like, huh, <laughs> that's the same shit that goes through my head, but I'm seeing it physically manifest. Like, I'll literally open my hotel room door, go out into the hallway, and then for the 18th time, mm-hmm. open the door back up and go back in and make sure right. I still have my hotel key. Yeah. Because I'm, for some reason, I'm not sure. I was doing the same thing with my passport when I had to travel, get on the plane. I get, do I have my passport? Do I have my ID? Do I have my boarding pass? Do I have everything I need? What if I forget a microphone? What if I forget something else? Just the total panic. And it's seriously, I had to just get in the car and go, whatever I don't have, if I need it, I'll find it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I travel so much for work. And I can pack my suitcase in about seven minutes mm-hmm. for like a two week trip. Right. Like it's, it's no big deal for me. I've never forgotten anything. And anything that I have forgotten, like, you know, like I'll, I'll bring my toothpaste, but it was like, oh, right, I only had one day's worth of toothpaste right. in it. Right. So I actually didn't really forget it. And for some reason, like on this trip, I forgot to pack underwear. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened. I didn't pack any. And I had to go to the mall and buy a whole bunch of underwear. That was the most expensive underwear trip I've ever made because the Uber, the Uber alone is uh, like almost $50. But I love that you had to buy a whole bunch because you kept buying the wrong kind. Well, I wasn't sure I was going to find the ones that I actually like. <laughs> so I bought some that I thought would work. And then I found the ones that actually work. Right. And then I was like, do I just... Re-? No, I'll just say, I'll use them. Don't worry. Right. I'll just take them. But it doesn't matter. Like, even even the worst case scenario, you forget your underwear. You can just go buy new ones. That's right. So on the topic of travel anxiety, I'm a better flyer than I was when I was younger. Still get a little anxious. And I have to say that my uh, alarm bells went off when the captain made a speech prior to takeoff saying that uh, the air looked a little bumpy up there so they were going to keep the seatbelt light on a little bit longer and uh, just make sure that we get through that thing safely they don't ever make that announcement like for me they've, they don't make that announcement prematurely it's usually like hey you might want to get back to your seat it's about to get wild yeah and so uh, you know the whole time I'm, I'm getting anxious getting scared of the situation and yes it did get bumpy but no worse than I've ever had before yeah but in the moment, I had to keep coming back to, like, it's not happening right now. You're fine. You're safe. Doing the box breathing. Trying to stay calm. And the more I did that, it was funny. I just was so much more at ease. Like, I, I wasn't listening to music. I wasn't doing anything to distract myself. I was just in the moment and very aware that I was perfectly safe, no matter how much that captain wanted me to shit my pants. He wasn't there to shit, his, to shit your pants. He was there to let you know it's going to be a little bumpy. I guess I know too much about how the how airplanes work. Sure. So like, you know, it's literally like the bumpiness of an airplane is like when you're driving down a dirt road and you're you're driving over bumps. That's all it is. Right, but it, but uh, when you're driving down the dirt road and they're driving over bumps, you don't suddenly drop hundreds or thousands of feet. That's not normal turbulence <laughs> in jetliners. Like you'll see that in Cessnas. Yeah. Because the wind will push you down that far. Yeah. But like the most you're ever going to drop in a big jetliner is like 20, 30 feet at a time, and you're not. But it feels that. like a thousand. But it doesn't. <laughs> and you know that, like, even if it is a 1,000, you got at least 30,000 more feet. You got to go before you're going to hit the ground. But that's the worst part, is the falling part. It's not even the hitting the ground part. It's the falling part that I'm worried about. Oh, no, I'll fall all day, just so long as we stop falling before we hit the ground. <laughs> I, have, I have nightmares about the screams of terror from the 300 other people on the plane as it plummets to the earth. No, no, it's... It is the hitting of the ground that bothers me. You can fall out of the sky so long as you can get. You won't even of it. feel it. How is that a thing? Come on. That's that's the but that's <laughs> the end. That's the end. I've only had like one major issue with an airplane though. Yeah. Only one. And even then it wasn't that bad, but it was one engine like got stuck in full throttle. Oh shit. So we were just like cruising altitude and like they don't even like go to full throttle to take off. Like mm-hmm. they only need like eighty percent thrust to take off. 
But like as we were in the air, all of a sudden you just heard this like, Whoa! and the one, and the plane twisted in the air mm -hmm. too. Like you felt it turn really Whoa. hard. And then it did that like three or four more times. And then you just heard the engine shut off and he banked really hard. And he started going back to Seattle and he's like, well folks, we got a problem with our engine. So we flew back to Seattle, 40 minutes on one engine. And he's like, this will be a totally normal landing. And again, I know a lot about aviation. So I noticed the flaps weren't fully extended. Mm -hmm. We were coming in really fast because if we got too slow, one engine wouldn't be able to pick us back up again. Mm -hmm. And there was ambulances and fire trucks all along the side of the runway sure, as we were landing. Okay. And it was, we landed and it was fine. They put us on another plane and only like two thirds of the people got on the plane. And it was like, okay. And then yeah. we took off and everyone's shoulders were up at their ears and everyone was nervous. Yeah. And about an hour in, everyone, everyone relaxed. And then the pilot came on and was like, hey folks, so uh, yeah, the, our old plane, that engine is completely destroyed in my 30 something years of flying. I've never seen oh anything like it. Uh, blah, blah, and everyone's ear, like everyone's shoulders went back up to their ears. Everyone got nervous again. It was, it was the worst flight. So what do you do in those moments when it's when it's at its worst? What, honestly, whether you're in a plane that's about to explode or, <laughs> you know, things are just too much. Well, A, I knew that the plane was not going to explode. It was just one engine. You didn't know. You had an idea. You didn't know. Well, and I can, I can every time the song that I was listening to, when that happened, whenever that comes on on my, on my phone, I can't yeah. listen to it anymore. PTSD, yeah. I can't do it. I skip it. But yeah, no, I just go back to box breathing, man. It is literally the one thing that activates the vagus nerve, stimulates that nerve to like bring you down to rest and digest and really just talking to your anxiety, like talking to your amygdala. I mean, like, dude, there's no tiger chasing me. And even if this plane does crash, mm -hmm. you have zero control over it. So let's just enjoy these last couple of minutes. <laughs> we sure are falling fast. It's a pleasant fall, but we're falling really fast. Yeah, I mean, like, think about it. You'll never experience that again. True. I mean, you won't experience anything else again, <laughs> right. but that'll be your last one. That was the key for me as well. That and just uh, that that uh, awareness, the, the presence of the moment, and just coming back to the fact that in this moment, you're fine. Right now, you and I are sitting in a lovely park in Denver, Colorado, not surrounded by red ants, but Call that in. could change at any second. But right know. now, we're perfectly fine. We are. It's a little sweaty. It is. It's hot. It's hot. Nobody told me Denver was so damn hot. I don't know. I figured it'd just be like a ski town. Duh. I wanted to wear coats and hoodies. And I mean, I got off of the plane and saw all the baggage claim stuff for, for skis and was like, oh, Nice. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be nice and cool here. No. 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 It's it is like stupid uncomfortable hot. Like I don't know why anyone lives here. It's crazy. <laughs> but really no, Denver's a cool city. I do like Denver. The temperature is a little off for me. Okay, well, we're back in our air-conditioned comfort zones working on new episodes for you. Those will be available in the days to come at thefitmess.com. That's also where you can sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date with the show and get bonus clips and outtakes. Thanks again for listening. We'll talk to you soon. We know this podcast is amazing. It doesn't seem to lack anything, but we need a legal disclaimer. Prior to implementing anything discussed in this podcast, it is your responsibility to conduct your own research and consult your physician. You should assume that Jeremy and Zach don't know what they're talking about, and they're not liable for any physical or emotional issues that occur directly.